I want to make sure we get through today is an introduction to quadratic functions and some of the applications we can have of quadratic functions. So we know quadratic equations, anything with an x squared, nothing higher, no x cubed, x to the fourth, anything like that. And we know that y equals x squared or f of x equals x squared. Is one of our parent graphs. It's a parabola. That U shape. It's got this dip. We know it's a minimum. It's a valley. Today, we're going to talk more about this type of graph. We're going to learn about some of the features. So what I'm going to do, instead of it being on a graph like that, I'm going to go ahead and draw two parabolas, one opening upward, one opening, opening downward. And in fact, let's officialize that. When we say it opens up, we're talking about this shape. When we say opens down, we're talking about this shape. The point all the way at the top for one that opens down, or the point all the way at the bottom for one uh, for the one that opens up. That's called the vertex point. So a vertex point is the minimum or maximum point, the point at the top of the hump, the point at the bottom of the valley. When we're moving a parabola up, down, left, right, it's that vertex point that we're actually moving up, down, left, or right, and then we draw it off from there. The vertex point on a parabola that opens down is a maximum. The vertex point on a parabola that opens up is a minimum. A parabola is symmetric. Uh, if its vertex is at 0, 0, it has y-axis symmetry. But if it moves up, down, left, right, it's not necessarily going to have y-axis symmetry anymore, but it will always be symmetric with respect to itself. So the line that goes vertically through the vertex that splits the parabola evenly, my crappy drawings strike again. But this is exactly the same as this if we fold it over. This exactly the same as that if we fold it over. That vertical line that goes through is called the axis of symmetry.
and that's right in the light spot. Let me see if I can write that a little fancier. Axis of symmetry. If you're a Marvel fan, AOS might stand for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. In this class, AOS stands for Axis of Symmetry. The Axis of Symmetry, since it is a vertical line, is an X equals whatever X value it goes through. And the X value it goes through, since the vertex, just like the center of a circle, is going to be referred to as HK, the vertex X value is H. So the axis of symmetry is always going to have the form X equals H. Okay. Our vertex point is a minimum or maximum. The axis of symmetry will always be x equals h, the x coordinate of the vertex point. The maximum or minimum point is the vertex. But if we talk about a maximum value of a function, or a minimum value of a function. In fact, let me write that. Maybe down here. The max or min value, not the whole point, just the value, that's the output, that's the y y equals k or another way of saying y equals k could be y equals f of h when the input is h the x coordinate of the vertex the output would be f of h what we get when we plug h back into the function because how do we get a y value we take an X value, we plug it in, we evaluate, we get a Y value out. We get a function value out. We get the value. So X equals the input, X equals H, that's gonna give us the line, that's the axis of symmetry. Y equals K plugging H into the function to get its output. That's gonna give us the value. It's gonna give us the Y coordinate up here or the Y coordinate down here. So you see we're kind of bookending here. We started uh, this unit with just learning about the various shapes. And now we're ending this unit by digging into this one shape uh, more deeply. Maximum, minimum. Okay. Now, you remember when we did circles? We used HK then, it was the center of the circle. And we had a special center radius form. With parabolas, we have a vertex form. This is y or f of x equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. So just like with the circle, hk was our center. Here, hk 
is the vertex. So if we're given something in this form, say for instance, f of x equals negative two times the quantity x minus one squared plus eight. One of the first things we can do is answer the question, what is the vertex? In other words, what is H K? Well, H is the thing that is subtracted from X. Here, X minus one is X minus H. So H must be positive one. K is the thing that's added to the square. We're adding eight, positive eight must be K. So one eight is the vertex. Another thing we will be able to uh, ascertain from vertex form is whether it opens up or down. Well, remember the one that opens up, that's y equals positive x squared. If we flip it over, if we get one that opens down, that means we have a reflection, y equals negative x squared. So when it's a negative out front, that's the one that opens down. So what we're going to do is look at A, the number in front of our x minus h squared, the number in front of our squared thing. If A is positive, then it opens up. But if A is negative, it opens down. And here, our A is negative 2. So it opens down. So, so far with vertex form, we've been able to find the vertex, 1, 8. We have been able to determine whether it's a parabola that opens up or opens down. and it opens down. I'm going to keep a track of the things we've found over here on the very right. Vertex 1, 8. Opens down. I'm going to erase our general vertex form, and I'm going to move this up. f of x equals negative 2 times the quantity x minus 1 squared plus 8. And now I've got some room to work. Next up. Let's find any x-intercepts and any y-intercepts that we might have. Now, x-intercepts, what do we know about that? Well, going back to very first lecture, x-intercepts that 
That's where y is zero. And y intercepts, that's where x is zero. Because if we're on the x axis, we're not up or down any. If we're on the y axis, we're not left or right any. If we go ahead and set y equal to zero or set f of x equal to zero, that doesn't mean plug zero in, it means set the whole thing equal to zero. So negative two times x minus one squared plus eight. What do we do next? We want to get the x by itself, so we got to get the x minus 1 squared by itself, so we got to get the negative 2 x minus 1 squared by itself. We can start by subtracting 8. This gives us negative 8 equals negative 2 times x minus 1 squared. We want to get the x, so we want to get the x minus 1, which means we need to get the x minus 1 squared, which means we need to get rid of multiplying by negative 2. So divide both sides by negative 2. I'm going to come over here for a little bit. Negative 8 divided by negative 2 is positive 4. These negative 2s canceled. That leaves us with the x minus 1 squared. To get rid of the squared, we take square roots of both sides. So that just leaves us with x minus 1 on the right, but on the left, the square root of 4 is going to be plus or minus 2. When we're solving, when we're taking the square roots of both sides uh, to end up solving for x, we have to remember to put our plus or minus there. Why? because it's not just positive two times positive two that gives four. It's also negative two times negative two. So since we have plus or minus two, that's two equations we have now. Plus two equals X minus one or minus two equals X minus one. Add one to both sides, we get x equals positive three. Add one to both sides, we get x equals negative two plus one. It's negative one. So we have two x-intercepts. The x-intercepts we found are the points 3, 0, and negative 1, 0. We still have to find the y-intercept. The y-intercept is going to be where x is 0, where we plug in 0. So x equals 0, we're going to take it, we're going to plug it in for x. We're looking for f of 0. That's negative 2 times 0 minus 1 squared plus 8. Use order of operations to simplify. Working inside the parentheses first, 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Exponents next, negative one all inside the parentheses squared means negative one times negative one. That's positive one. Multiplication before addition, negative two times one is negative two. And then finally, negative two plus eight would be positive six f of zero is negative or f of zero is positive six. That means when we plug zero in for x to get our y intercept, we get an output of positive six.
Okay, so we found the vertex. We found that this opens downward. We found two x-intercepts. We found the y-intercept. We have enough now to graph this parabola. Let's graph it. And then we'll answer a few more questions afterwards. Clean that up a little bit. Got to make sure that I have enough to go up to eight. Got to make sure I have enough to go left to negative one. Got to make sure I have enough to go right to three. Everything else will fit in here. Vertex one eight. So one over on the X and then up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to get that point. Plotted. It opens downward, so we're expecting it to hit the x-axis twice. That's why we have two x-intercepts at three and at negative one. The y-intercept happens at one, two, three, four, five, six. So that left side of the parabola looks like that. The right side of the parabola is gonna be a mirror image. It's gonna come down. It's gonna go through this other x-intercept. And if we wanted to, since we know that this point is left one down two, since we know it's symmetrical, we can go right one down two, and we can put that extra point in if we want. We can take advantage of the symmetry of a parabola. If we have a point on the left side, we have the equidistant point on the right side. And where does... What feature of the parabola allows us to take advantage of symmetry? Why the axis of symmetry? And that'll be our next question. The axis of symmetry, where is it? Well, the axis of symmetry is x equals our h, x equals whatever the vertex point is, that X value, one, X equals one is gonna be the axis of symmetry. And there we see it, it's this imaginary line through X equals one, whereby the left side and the right side of the parabola um, act like a mirror image with the axis of symmetry being the mirror. Since it opens downward, do we have a max or a min? Since it opens downward, our vertex is on the top. That means we have a max. And if we have a max, we can ask, what is the max value of this function? Well, that's going to be y equals rk going to be the output of the vertex. The max value is eight. This literally means y equals eight is the maximum y value. We can't have 
y equals nine. We can't have y equals 10 because it's the maximum. It starts going back down after it hits eight. And what do we call what we can have for our x and what we can have for our y? We call that domain and range. So the last two questions about this parabola. Yeah, we're still on that vertex form. It's going to be domain. And it's going to be range. Well, guess what? For domain, all parabolas are either going to open up or they're going to open down. So it's either going to go up forever or down forever, not both. But no matter whether it opens up or whether it opens down, it will go left forever. It will go right forever. And since that means that if we imagine negative infinity and we move towards positive infinity along the X, there will always be graph somewhere either way, way, way up, if it opens up, or way, way, way down, if it opens down. The domain of a parabola is always going to be negative infinity to infinity, all real numbers. The range is going to be determined by the max or min value. Here, the maximum value was 8. That means... The Y's can't get any higher than eight, but they can include eight. How low can they go? All the way. They can go all the way to negative infinity, which will take a parenthesis. So the domain, negative infinity to infinity, the range, negative infinity to eight. I'm going to take a look at this vertex form one more time. I'm going to move it down. So again, we have f of x equals negative 2 times x minus 1 squared plus eight. I'm going to take this out of vertex form. I want to expand everything, get rid of the parentheses. I'm going to put this in the form f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Standard quadratic form. Now, a can't be zero. If it is, then the x squared goes away and it's linear. It's not quadratic anymore. But a can be positive, just means it's open up. A will be negative, it just means it opens down. The a is always the same as in vertex form. So we can expect our a to end up being negative two. But how do we expand? First, we square this. x minus 1 squared means x minus 1 times itself. You can FOIL. You can use the special formula. Either way, you're going to end up with x squared minus 2x plus 1. Then we have our plus 8. Distribute negative 2x squared plus 4x minus 2 plus 8. 
and we have negative 2x squared plus 4x, negative 2 plus 8 gives us positive 6. Some of the things are easier to find this way. For instance, if I'm plugging zero in for X, I can see that we get that Y intercept of six um, pretty quickly. We could use the quadratic formula uh, to solve the thing for zero and get our two answers for x. But all of the questions that we had uh, from vertex form, we can find in regular form as well, including the vertex. So here is our big trick. This is called the vertex formula, not to be confused with vertex form. And the vertex formula is that H equals negative B over 2A. Negative B over 2a. So what are a, b, and c? If we have f of x equals negative 2x squared plus 4x plus 6. Well, a would be negative 2, B would be positive 4, C would be positive 6. So, H is negative B over 2A. That's negative 4, the opposite of 4, over 2 times negative 2. That's negative 4 over negative 4, which is positive 1. Huh. Well, how do we find k? We plug one into the function. And we don't have our original function. That's not what we're looking for for the vertex formula. We have our f of x equals negative 2x squared plus 4x plus 6. And when we plug one in, when we find f of 1 to get our k, that's negative 2 times 1 squared plus 4 times 1 plus 6. Negative 2 times 1 plus 4 plus 6. Negative 2 plus 4 plus 6. 2 plus 6 is 8. 1, 8. Same vertex. It's good that we have this vertex formula because otherwise, in order to go from um, AX squared plus BX plus C form to find the vertex, we would need it in vertex form. We would need to complete the square. So unless it specifically says, hey, convert this into vertex form, 
If it's just asking for the vertex, we can use the vertex formula. If it wants vertex form, we need to complete the square like we did with circles. Next up, we're going to have f of x equals negative x squared plus 4x minus Find the vertex. Well, it's not in vertex form. So we'll use the vertex formula, negative b over 2a. Here, a would be negative 1, b would be positive 4. So the opposite of 4 over 2 times negative 1, that's negative 4 over negative 2, which is positive 2. So, so far, the vertex has a positive 2 for the x value. Let's plug that into the function to find k. k is going to be f of h. In this case, that's f of 2, which is what? Well, the opposite of just our x squared, the opposite of the 2 squared, plus 4 times 2, minus 5. Plugging it in there and there. <laughs> 2 squared is 4. The opposite would be negative 4. If that negative was inside the parentheses, if we were plugging in a negative 2, it'd be different. But we have the minus on the outside. So that doesn't turn into a positive. That's going to stay a minus sign. Plus 8, minus 5. Negative 4 plus 8 is positive 4. Minus 5. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. So a vertex. Of 2, negative 1. Is this going to open up or open down? Well, A is negative, so it's going to open down. That means we're going to have a max. And in fact, that max value is what? I'm going out of order with the questions, but we should be able to handle them in any order. Once we have the vertex, the max value is the y. So a max value of y equals negative 1. An axis of symmetry, that's x equals 2. Because it goes through the x of the vertex. Domain, well, it's a parabola. All parabolas have a domain of all real numbers. The range comes from the maximum value or the minimum value, but in this case, a max. There is no minimum, goes down forever. Negative infinity on the Y, but a max value 
up to and including negative one. What are we missing? X and Y intercepts. Easy one is the Y intercept because that's when X is zero. When X is zero, we plug in zero for X. That disappears, that disappears. Zero plus zero minus five. The Y is going to be negative five. So Y intercept point zero negative five. The X intercept, this one is when Y is zero. And that means set the whole thing equal to zero. And we'll do that with the quadratic formula. Let me move the y-intercept up here. So I can work in this area down here. I'm going to move domain. Nah, I'll leave that where it is. We've got enough room over here to handle the quadratic formula. A equals negative 1, B equals 4, C equals negative 5. Uh, put that here. A equals negative 1, B equals 4, C equals negative 5. So what is the quadratic formula? X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So x equals the opposite of 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared minus 4 times negative 1 times negative 5 all over 2 times negative 1. You're saying, when do we learn this? Last course, not last class, last course. X equals negative four plus or minus in here, four squared is 16. And then minus, 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 That's going to end up being a negative, negative four times negative one is positive four times negative five. It's going to be a minus 20. Now look what happened. 16 minus 20. That says the square root of negative four. Can we take the square root of a negative number? No. That means this isn't a real number. No X intercept. Because when we tried to find the X intercept, we got not a real number. So anytime we do this part of the quadratic formula, the b squared minus 4ac, the discriminant. And we get a negative number. That means there's no x-intercepts. If we get a positive number underneath, then just like the last time, we'll have two x-intercepts. And if we get zero, that means that 
it's still just touching the x-axis. I just drew this. If it's touching, then it happens at only one point. That's when we have the square root of zero in the quadratic formula, or zero for the discriminant. But looking for the x uh, intercept, didn't get a real answer, no x intercept. Finally, let's use all this information to graph. We have a vertex point of two negative one, and it opens down. Well, look, it opens down. No x intercepts then. But we have a y intercept of zero, two, three, four, negative five. And since this is an axis of symmetry, it would kind of look like that on the other side. That might be the most accurate symmetrical drawing that I've drawn today. If we have 2x squared minus 16x plus 41, if this is our function, f of x, we know how to find the vertex without having to put it into vertex form. We know that h would be negative b over 2a. Here, a is 2, b is negative 16. So negative, negative 16 over 2 times 2. h is positive 16 over 4. h is 4. So for the vertex, 4 is the x-coordinate. How do we find k? Well, we plug in to the function 4. Two times four squared minus 16 times four plus 41. F of four would be two times 16 minus 64 plus 41. F of four would be 16 times two is 32 minus 64 plus 41. F of four is negative 32 plus 41. Negative 32 plus 41 would be positive nine. F of four is nine when X is four, Y is nine. That means nine is K. So we can find the vertex using the vertex formula, H being negative B over two A, K being F of H. We can kind of use that cheat to put something in standard form into vertex form, into a times x minus h squared plus k form. Remember, if we had something that looked like this, we could pull the vertex right out. But once we have the vertex, we can plug in h, we can plug in k, and a is the same as it ever was. Since a was 2 in this form, that means a is 2 in this form. And just like that, we can go from standard form to vertex form.
And we could use vertex form to find something like the range. Even though we did this before, we still need to know how to do it going forward. This will be on the test. So let's go ahead and find the range. What is range? Recall, it is all of our y values. It's all of our outputs. On a graph, we would look at what's going on in relation to the y value going up and down. What do we know about the graph of this? Well, the vertex is 4, 9. Up here. Does it open up or down? It opens up because A is positive. If A were negative, it would come down. We can see this doesn't have any x-intercepts because of the shape and location. But that means that our lowest y value is going to be that positive 9. Positive 9 is the first y value we have, and then we have y is going all the way up to infinity. So that would be the range. Okay. The last thing I'm going to do is going to be an application problem for vertex and vertex form. This will also be on the test. Let's say we have P of T, and it's going to be a function representing a population of bacteria over time. Negative 1,911 T squared plus 84,000 T plus 20,000. This is what happens when we get into real life situations with real life numbers. They're not nice and controlled anymore. Anything could happen here. This is still a controlled problem. It's still going to work out nicer than real world stuff would. But anyway, this function represents a population of bacteria after T hours. When is the maximum population? What is the maximum? Population. So two different questions here. Well, an ordered pair here, our input would be T. Our output would be P of t, whatever we get when we put t into the function. So the x coordinate being time, when is going to come from the x. 
And then the actual output at that time, that's going to be the what. Notice both of these are asking about a maximum. When does maximum happen? At the vertex. So specifically, the x coordinate of the vertex will be our time. That's going to be h. And then the output when we plug h in. That's K, the Y coordinate of the vertex. So each piece of the vertex will give us an answer to a different question. The input, the time, that's gonna be the when of it all. And when we plug the time in, we get the actual population, the output, That'll answer the question of what the population is. Vertex formula again. That's why I reviewed that just now. H is going to be negative B over 2A. B is positive 84,000. A is negative 1,911. The opposite of B, negative 84,000 over two times A, two times negative 1,911. Negative 84,000 over negative 3,822. Negative over negative is positive. And I'm going to go ahead and divide using a calculator. 84,000 divided by 3822. I get about 21.978. We're going to round that to 22 hours. When is the maximum population? It happens at 22 hours, 21.978 to be exact. So I guess these numbers weren't controlled after all, says 21.978. What is the maximum population? Well, for that, we would need to find P of 22. We would need to find what we get when we plug 22 in. Negative 1911 times 22 squared plus 84,000 times 22 plus 20,000. So at 22 hours, we get a max population. And again, the reason it's a maximum is because A is negative. It's a parabola opening down. The vertex is a maximum point. I'm going to use my calculator to help again. 22 squared, 22 times 22 is 484. 84,000 times 22. 1,848,000, million plus 20,000. Just doing a little bit at a time, order of operations. 1,911 times 484. That's going to be negative 9,2,4,9,2,4. And if I just go across here, negative 9249244 plus 1848000 plus 20,000, 9430076. So that would be our total population.
P of X is a profit function. Specifically, it's gonna be negative 30 X squared plus 1,320 X plus 4,830. X is the number of cars produced per shift. Like I said, P of X is the daily profit. Let's find the maximum possible daily profit. When we hear maximum, we think of the vertex of a parabola where it's on top, where it's the maximum point, the uppermost point. And sure enough, this is a parabola because it has an x squared. The vertex point is hk, where x equals h is the maximum input. In this case, it would be the maximum x, the maximum number of cars, which would give us y equals k the maximum profit. We want to find the maximum profit, which means we need to find H so that we can find K. And we know that H is negative B over 2A. B is 13, 20. So negative B is negative 13, 20 times 2a, a is negative 30. So we're looking for negative 13, 20 over negative 60. Negative over negative is positive. Cut off a zero two, divide them both by 10. 132 over six. Six goes into 13 twice, remainder one, bring down the two. Six goes into 12 twice evenly. So this is 22. We know that H is 22. How could we find K? How do we find the output of a function? We need to find P of 22. How do we find P of 22? Plug it in, plug it in, plug it in. We found that the maximum number of cars we can build in a day is 22 before profit starts going down. What is this maximum profit? We're about to find out. Twenty two squared. That's 22 times 22. That's 484. Negative 30 times 484 plus 1320 times 22. 13. 20 times 22. is 29,040 plus 4,830. 
negative times positive is negative. Negative 14,520 plus 29,040 plus 4,830. Negative 14,000 plus 29,000, that pushes it into the positives. We can subtract to find out where we land. Pushes us to positive 14,520. plus 4830 $19,350 would be the maximum daily profit.